To begin our scan, we start in the midline, looking at the left lobe of the liver in a transverse section. And we can see that the left lobe of the liver is the triangular structure in the middle of the field. Within the liver, we can see the vessels. There are two types of vessels that we can appreciate here. We can see the portal veins, which have an echo-bright margin on the walls of the vessels, which we can see here. And there's the hepatic veins, which unlike the portal veins, don't have an echo-bright margin. There we can see the hepatic veins coming down to join the inferior vena cava as we scan more superiorly. So here we've got the portal vein, which is echo bright, and the hepatic vein, which is dark. Next to the portal veins, we would find the biliary tracts, which in a normal patient would not be dilated, and therefore we wouldn't really be able to see them, as is the case here. And we'd only be able to appreciate the lumen of the biliary tracts if the biliary tracts themselves were dilated. For example, as a result of a lodged gallstone. But before we carry on, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on any of our new content releases. Deep to the liver, now we can see the celiac trunk or the celiac axis. So the Y shaped blood vessel, which we can see here, is the celiac trunk as it comes off the abdominal aorta on the patient's left side. As you're looking at the patient's left, we can see the splenic artery, and on the right side, we can see the hepatic artery. As we move inferiorly, we can see the splenic vein is draped across the retroperitoneum, and superficial to this is the pancreas. The pancreas, in transverse section, is identified by finding the splenic vein, which we use as our landmark. This is the low echogenic structure that we can see in the middle of our screen. And the pancreas lies directly superficial to it. So we can see it here as the grey band of solid tissue. So there you've got the body of the pancreas located in the midline. And we can also see the tail of the pancreas, which is not always easy to identify in some patients, as the stomach often obscures our view. But in this patient, we're able to see the tail of the pancreas really nicely. Scanning a little bit more efferally, we come to the head of the pancreas, which is located where the splenic vein joins with the superior mesenteric vein. If we continue to scan more inferiorly, we can see in the middle of the screen the superior mesenteric vein, and just to the side is a small round structure, which is the superior mesenteric artery. And deep under the artery, in the middle of the image, the pulsating abdominal aorta. Even deeper to the aorta, we can see a bright horizontal line. And this is actually the anterior part of the vertebral column. So you can see just how posterior lying the abdominal aorta really is. So going from looking in the transverse plane over the epigastrium, we're now going to look in the sagittal plane. We can see the left lobe of the liver going from the right side through to the left side of the image. And it's the triangular shaped structure in the foreground. Within the left lobe of the liver, we're able to again visualize the portal veins, which we now know we're able to recognize due to the presence of the echo bright margin on their walls. As we go more to the right side, we can see the left main hepatic vein which doesn't have echoes in the wall. And this, as we know, is how we can tell the difference between hepatic veins and portal veins. The deeper structure that you can see there is the inferior vena cava. And we can see the hepatic veins draining into it. If we move over to the left, we can see the pulsating abdominal aorta. and superficial to the abdominal aorta, we're able to appreciate the splenic vein in cross-section. And then, if we move slightly to the left, we can visualize 
the superior mesenteric vein as it drains into the splenic vein. Here we can also appreciate the sagittal view of the body of the pancreas on the surface of the splenic vein, located between the liver and the superior mesenteric vein. Moving back to the liver, to visualize the right lobe of the liver, we turn the patient onto their left side and look subcostally, initially in the sagittal plane. We can see the liver is a solid organ and containing, as we know, the portal and the hepatic veins. As we scan to the left, we can appreciate the inferior vena cava. And just under this is a little round structure, which is actually the right renal artery in cross section. Within the liver, we can see the portal veins, which lie obliquely, and they come into line. And here we can see the portal vein going into the liver. And just superficial to this is a small echo-bright structure, which is actually the common bile duct. But as we mentioned earlier, we would not normally see this dilated unless there's an obstruction or the presence of some pathology. As we move over to the patient's right side, we can then use the liver as a window to identify and visualize the right kidney and we'll be covering this in more detail in our next video. If you found this video helpful, then make sure you subscribe to our channel for more great free content. Or if you want to make learning for med school and board exams easier, then subscribe to surgicalteaching.com and check out our expert endorsed videos, high yield revision questions, and our supportive online community. Surgical Teaching was designed by doctors to help students learn smarter. And right now, you can enjoy all of our great content for less with 20% off our annual premium subscriptions when using the code STYouTube20. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.